Hey, hey, what's going on? This is Bruce with Bowski Studio. A little wintry day here in Maine, so I'm going to be working on another oil painting demo on a 5x5 five five panel. We're going to do some uh, little hay field with some hay bales and a distant view looking over to a lake. So let's get rolling. Okay, here are the, uh, here are the colors we're going to be using today from left to right. Utrecht White, the Windsor Newton Winton Burnt Umber, Van Gogh Oil Paints Prussian Blue, Winter Newton Winton Cad Yellow Pale and Winter Newton Winton Cad Red Hue. Just keeping it simple and uh, have some fun. Hey everyone, what's up? I'm really happy with the uh, amount of views I had on my last video with the uh, nice blue crate with the bibs hanging on the wall like to mix it up a bit with these videos. Some are a little shorter, some longer. Uh, quite a few people have, over time, have expressed seeing some uh, longer format videos. And uh, I try to do my best to accommodate those requests, though they, of course, do take more time to, uh, number one, when I'm shooting, to organize the sequence of how I want to present information. There might be some elements I want to spend more time on, others not so much. So it's kind of like you're, um, I wouldn't say writing a script, but you're kind of, kind of thinking like that. So uh, thank you very much uh, for appreciating the effort it uh, uh, took to put that out. I do have another a landscape that's going to be a little bit lengthy one that's going to be uh, pretty nice. Now this particular view that I'm painting is actually from a photo I took years ago. I used to live in a place called Unity, Maine, and there was this road, Quaker Hill Road, that when you went up to where it kind of crested, it was like a hill, a big hill, and you look back, you got this amazing view that um, was pretty spectacular. And what's interesting, that area, there was a lot of plain air material around there looking back. But uh, at the time, I was not into plein air painting, and uh, I was working uh, full time. Anyway, so it would have been a little difficult, but I had some really nice landscapes around me. And occasionally in the past, I have gone back through those old neighborhoods, so to speak, and looking for material. And uh, that is one place that I'd like to revisit again. I haven't been there probably for mm, two, three years, I guess. And uh, of course, time of day is so critical in plein air painting so uh, that particular time I went through the lighting wasn't great in the spots that I thought it would be so that's why it's important you know to live near the area uh, where you're going to explore if possible it really gives you the opportunity to to check it out in different time time frames um, this town unity is probably about if I had to guess half an hour almost 40 minutes away so it's not super convenient now um, but it's definitely something to plan a day trip on and what you know as you saw the palette choice that I, I'm using for this video is very limited but it really kind of limits just how many choices you got to make for mixing up a color you know you you have your blue and and yellow to make a green and then you just got a couple modifiers with the burnt umber or the uh, red for the uh, chroma of the green if you want to make it more earthy and that sort of thing so it keeps it pretty pretty darn basic for you and i'm really liking in this particular piece how the uh, sky's shaping up really a lot of fun doing that now you see i don't necessarily uh, and you've seen it in other videos but i don't work consistently like from left to right or right to left or whatever um, I'm more of a painter that dances around the surface of the painting depending on how things are shaping up in some paintings the subject matter lends itself to really striking in the strongest highlights and the strongest darks and then finding your mid values other paintings are approached a little differently so it really depends on what I'm doing for the subject matter and in certain cases like here you know I could use an even bigger brush to really strike in that green right off and be done with it but Again, I've mentioned this in the past, you want to be careful of uh, too big a strokes uh, interrupting the scale of your painting. Uh, you would still have to nuance uh, that big stroke down to make it fit into context of the 
uh, aesthetics of the painting, so to speak, and uh, just trying to add some varied greens within the lit field area. The shadow in the foreground is caused by a big group of trees off scene to the left. I just thought it was a nice, nice framer effect element for the uh, looking beyond to the uh, sunlit bales that are coming up. And now, once I put that dark in there, you can see me. I, that's when I nuance the little bit of reflected light and all that sort of thing in the grass. And it really helps give you some soft edges and. You can always intensify this more with a little brighter color later if you wanted to, but gives you some nice starting points. Oh, something I want to mention that this uh, just shot it today actually. Um, a couple people have mentioned about my framing. Uh, how do how do I make my framing for my paintings? So I'm going to have a, a little lengthy video coming up uh, shortly. Matter of fact, I'll probably be making it uh, right after this one, putting it together, and. Uh, give you some insight as to how you can make your own framing. It's very easy to do, just minimal investment really. It's really not a lot. And I think a lot of people, a lot of artists out there will get some uh, benefit from it, especially because framing is so expensive if you go to even buying frames, if you're doing a lot of painting. And also this gives you, it will give you the control to create whatever frame size you want. So be looking forward to that. And uh, also part of it towards the end will be about how I cut up my MDF panels to uh, actually paint on. So of course introducing a little bit of palette knife work there. I'm, I'm loving um, bringing that effect into my landscapes and any paintings I work on. It's really nice number one to get the paint on there. You can manipulate it however you want but really been kind of uh, bummed out. I've been wanting to get out in the winter uh, uh, right now you know to do some uh, plain air painting but it's just been too brutally cold I mean like 12 14 degrees and and when we did have a couple days that were you know 30 35 I was working so pretty bummed but um, I think I just might try to get out there anyway and maybe in those cases do some speed painting just try to practice getting some essential notes of a scene in case I ever needed to do that might be good practice so Hopefully I can uh, bring you some of those before the winter ends. I mean, I really want to enjoy all seasons, not just the nice sunny ones and warm ones. I also want people to know that I am working on improving uh, even some more, a uh, little bit of quality to the videos in terms of the content in them. I have uh, experimented uh, that I'm going to try to introduce in an upcoming landscape video of... Uh, a video in video you might have seen those on some YouTube channels a person will be painting and then bottom right or left corner will be another video showing their palette and as they reach down and mix the color you'll see what they're doing and uh, the coordination of it for me might be a little maybe too complex for me but I'm gonna give it a shot and uh, see what I can do for you to give you some insight as to what happens on the palette when I'm mixing I also want to be doing some more uh, still life painting in the studio, practice some uh, observational skills there. Did some in the beginning of my channel and uh, really enjoyed them and uh, want to work on some other ones. And also might even try some interior uh, paintings. Just set up my easel in my house. I have some kind of cool areas in the house that I've always looked at and wanted to paint. And sometimes it's hard to, because of lighting, hard to get a good photograph to work from, to paint from. So I figure what better way than just to paint it from life. So uh, those are some of my plans for the upcoming year. And uh, to bring you some different type of videos. And uh, I'm also on the uh, back burner. want to uh, do some, get into practicing portrait portrait painting uh, starting of course with self portraits with a mirror and start trying to hone my skill at that um, takes a lot of effort for the draftsmanship and uh, most of the time uh, in the past I've just been kind of lazy about it so I really want to try to apply myself this year and hone that part of my arsenal or my toolbox if you will uh, and uh, I think it's important 
I just really don't want to be the artist that is not painting something because I can't paint something, but because I choose not to. So, to, and and being self-taught like I am, I, I'm kind of a little self-conscious about about that a bit. And uh, just just it's time to put in the hard work and really kind of try to hone my skills even more. And uh, so that's also on the uh, to-do list for this season, along with. Uh, I want to I want to do I approached a uh, artist friend of mine about doing an interview about her working process and uh, she works in acrylics and does these really cool uh, variety of subject matter but her she does these animal portrait kind of things that are not portrait like uh, you're doing a commission portrait but just maybe she goes to a farm takes some pictures of some pigs and she really gets some character in these and they're really the the layering technique of her acrylics are. It's pretty amazing, so I'm trying to convince her to do a video, uh, an interview video, and I think that'd be interesting for you guys, and uh, see if I can get other artists that I know to maybe do that, and uh, that might take a little work to uh, bring to fruition, but I'm going to work on it. Now back to painting for a little bit. Th this is the part I love, as you saw in the past couple uh, minute or two of when I'm painting the painting, getting the kind of middle values and all that going on, and then I pop in some highlights. It really kind of starts setting things off, giving uh, the landscape some dimension, and uh, really trying to pay attention to the recession in size of the hay bales. Sometimes people get caught up in uh, what they're doing and they don't pay attention to scale. So it's important that you try to be observant uh, uh, when you're painting to uh, do that. And you'll see later on in the painting, when the painting's all done, but in hindsight, I wish a, I'm thinking a, a little fence, a couple fence posts might have been interesting in here, but you know, sometimes not in this particular case with the small painting, but uh, this is why people do artists do a, a version two or three or whatever, because there's different compositions and elements that can be added to a scene. You know, once you do one scene, that's not like, oh, that's it, I can never paint that again. Oh, here's my favorite little tool, using it for the uh, power pulse. And in this case, what I'm doing is just taking off some excess paint of the green because the color is going over, it's gonna be lighter. So this facilitates getting some of that paint out of the way. And then I'll uh, layer in with a small brush, the uh, detail work, as you see here. And you'll notice too in my videos, a lot of times I'll keep going back to the palette to pick up more paint, especially important when you're doing these small details. You can only maybe get a certain run. The small brush only loads up so much paint and you don't want to scrub around too much. You want to lay that paint on with confidence. That'll help you uh, not intermix too much with a previous layer underneath even though I wiped out most of that green with that little rubber tipped tool. Now I'm just suggesting some of the cut hay left over as they've rolled it up into the bales. There's always remnants left over and adds a nice little value difference on top of that green and it gives you an opportunity or lead-in lines into the distant um, view of the lake there. So something to think about. Don't just put them in there without thinking. Really try to use them to your advantage. Even if they're there but not in the right shape when you're on site, you just make them up. Okay, we're going to be wrapping up this video in a few seconds, so I want to thank you for joining me again. And... Uh, Let's look forward to a, a great 2019 and bring out some interesting content for you guys on my, my channel. And uh, until the next one, catch you later. Okay, everybody, this concludes this uh, painting demonstration. I really had a lot of fun on this one. Uh, if you're new to the channel, checking it out for the first time, thank you for watching. I invite you to subscribe. Be sure to hit the bell notification icon and uh, to get notified of new videos. And for everybody, I'd like to invite you to check out my art page on Facebook, Habowski Studio. You can like and follow there. Also, I post uh, 
works in progress and other art related type of stuff that you won't see on the channel. So please head over to Facebook, check it out. Uh, until the next time, take care. Bye.